Hello and welcome to the Habu STS 70mm Ready to Fly Quick Start Guide. We can start with our pre-flight checks. First, we'll install the flight battery with our DXS transmitter powered on. The transmitter is bound or connected to the aircraft from the factory, so as soon as they're both powered on, they will automatically connect. Always power on the transmitter before powering the aircraft and leave it powered on until you remove the battery from the aircraft. Lower the throttle stick on the transmitter and turn on the throttle hold switch. The throttle hold switch will ensure that the motor does not spin up if the throttle stick is accidentally bumped. Although this aircraft does not have an external propeller to worry about, it does have a very powerful ducted fan unit. Be sure there is nothing near the intakes that could get sucked in and never stick fingers or anything else inside the air intake or the exhaust. Remove the hatch by pressing the latch button. Then gently pull up on the canopy. Slide in the fully charged battery and secure it with the hook and loop strip. We are using the included 3S battery. With the 3S battery, keep it pushed all the way forward in the battery compartment. Only one of the battery straps will be used to hold it down. This battery positioning will ensure that the aircraft's center of gravity is correct. When using a four cell battery, you'll actually use both straps and push it back towards the center. With the transmitter powered on, plug the battery plug into the ESC and we'll hear the initialization tone. Three tones indicating we're using a three cell LiPo. The aircraft is now initializing. Now I'll replace the canopy. Now that the aircraft is initialized, we can begin our pre-flight checks. Switch the flight mode switch to position two. This is experience mode. The right stick controls the elevator and ailerons. When the stick is moved up, we will see the elevator move down. This will cause the nose of the airplane to dip down while in flight. Pulling down on the stick will cause the elevator to move up. This will cause the nose of the aircraft to point upwards. Moving the stick left and right controls our ailerons. When we move the stick to the right, it should make the right aileron move up and the left aileron move down. This will cause the plane to roll to the right. Moving the stick to the left, we see the left aileron move up while the right aileron moves down. This will cause the jet to roll to the left. The left stick, moving left and right, controls our rudder and steerable nose wheel. That'll cause it to yaw or turn the aircraft. Now, we can test the throttle as well We'll flip off our throttle cut and hold the plane so it can't jolt forward. We can slowly raise the throttle stick and we'll hear the whine of the motor to know that it's working properly. Now we know all our surfaces are functioning properly, we can now test the safe system. Be sure to flip the throttle hold back on and then Flip the flight mode switch to position zero. This is beginner mode. To see that safe is on and working, you can tilt the aircraft on its side and we should see the ailerons move to try to bring the plane back level. Here we can see if I flip back to expert mode, the ailerons go back to level. Flipping back to beginner mode, we can see them move to try to right the airplane. Now 
Flying in beginner mode is ideal for takeoffs and landings. It helps the plane fly straight and level, and you can essentially drive the jet around in the air. The safe technology will let you turn and control the aircraft's speed, but will prevent the aircraft from rolling over or looping. This is very beneficial in helping a new pilot get the feeling and understanding of how the aircraft flies while reducing the chance of overcorrecting, which is very common with new pilots and can cause a crash. Flipping the flight mode switch to position one is intermediate mode. This flight mode still limits the banking angles like beginner mode, but will allow the aircraft to bank slightly farther enabling tighter turns and more maneuverability. For your first several flights, you will likely switch between these two flight modes. When you are feeling confident with the aircraft and ready to see its full aerobatic capabilities, flip the flight mode switch to position two, experienced mode. This is the flight mode without limits. While experienced mode does retain Spectrum AS3X, which gives the aircraft more stability at high speeds and managing wind, in this mode, the aircraft can roll and loop and respond to the transmitter sticks exactly as entered. If you begin to panic or lose orientation, you can always flip back to beginner mode or press the panic recovery button. Pressing this button will immediately cause the aircraft to level itself and will remain flying level for a few moments to let the pilot regain orientation and recover the aircraft. To unlock the full speed potential of the Habu STS, you may consider flying it with a four cell LiPo battery, but I would suggest being comfortable with how it flies on a 3S before upgrading the battery. The Habu STS is a good sized model that should be flown at a designated RC flying field or other unoccupied large field that can accommodate RC flying. Know your local guidelines and ordinances regarding RC flying and always follow the rules. The Habu is not a small sized aircraft and has plenty of power to handle some wind gusts. However, for your first few flights, it is recommended that it only be flown on a calm day with very little wind. Always fly the aircraft out in front of you, away from obstacles, people, pets, and always keep a line of sight with the aircraft. Do not fly too far away to avoid losing orientation. When you've arrived at your flying field and gotten the battery installed, and you've done your pre-flight checks, also do a range test. Refer to the aircraft manual for details. When ready for takeoff, taxi the aircraft out to the center of the runway, switch to beginner mode, and raise the throttle stick up all the way. As the jet increases speed, it will begin to lift. Gently pull back on the elevator stick to help it lift and gain altitude. Fly in controlled circles for about five minutes, or you can monitor the LED lights on the spectrum transmitter that represent the battery voltage telemetry in the aircraft. As the battery is depleted, the lights will start to go out. When all of the lights but one have shut off, the transmitter will emit an audible warning indicating it is time to land. When the audible warning is heard, begin to land to avoid running into LVC. LVC, or low voltage cutoff, is displayed as a loss of power or a pulsing of the motor. If this is noticed, the aircraft must be landed immediately. When landing, switch to beginner mode and lower the throttle stick. Lowering the throttle will cause the jet to descend. Line up with the runway and use incremental elevator and rudder movements to keep the aircraft coming in straight. Just before touchdown, gently pull back on the elevator stick to flare the nose of the aircraft upward. This will help ensure a smooth landing on the main gear. Once it has landed and stopped moving, flip the throttle cut and retrieve the aircraft. Always unplug the aircraft after flight and avoid storing the battery inside the aircraft. The optional landing assist sensor is available separately for even easier landings. Another fantastic resource from Horizon Hobby is the Real Flight Simulator. With Real Flight, you can practice with hundreds of different RC aircraft at dozens of different flying fields. The Habu STS is also included. Fly for as long as you want 
from the comfort of your own home without having to worry about the weather or running out of daylight. Thank you so much for joining me today and taking a closer look at the Habu STS from eFlight. It's an exciting, fast performance jet that has been engineered to be easy enough to fly for even a brand new pilot.